You would expect COVID to be a bad time for everyone, wouldn't you? And that's because you're the rapper Illy if you put an S at the front. That's right, you're silly. You need to subscribe to this channel so you're less silly, all right? Look at the US, nearly half a million deaths, unemployment at 20%, Trump almost won. He killed half a million of his own people and improved his vote by 10 million. For a politician to screw up that much and still nearly win an election, oh wait, sorry, this is YouTube, did win the election. You would expect in a country like Australia that had next to no COVID cases and JobKeeper that the government would be grinding the opposition to a pulp. Yet a recent news poll showed Labor is neck and neck with the coalition. 50-50, Australia flips your coin. UK Labor isn't doing that well and Johnson f***ed up almost as much as Trump. There are polls that show that Australia's trust in the federal government of managing the health risk has steadily been decreasing. Their trust in Morrison's economic management is a slippery dip. Yeah, cheaper than going to Threadbay. And Australians are starting to see Scott Morrison for the self-serving parasite that he is. And so naturally, with Albo doing this well, there's leadership speculation. Why isn't opposition leader Albo chairman Albo already? Weak. Oh my god, what's with Dictator Dan acting like he's the chairman of the Labor Party? Too strong. You need to recognise this basic tactic that the press uses against Labor. Rudd gets in, mm, Gillard's more popular now, and that's got nothing to do with the fact that we're relentlessly shitting on Rudd while superimposing halos on Gillard every time she's on screen, then Gillard gets in. Backstabber! You, you just gotta sit there and take that, Kevin! Reclaim your legacy! Reclaim it! Shorten gets in. Everyone hates him. Why does everyone hate him? It can't be that the only question we ever ask is why does everyone hate him? It's clearly his fault, Alba. Now he's the popular man of the hour, and then he gets in. Oh, he's not popular either. What a dud. Plibersek. Now she's Australia's Jacinta Arden. Plibersek gets in. If only we could go back to the days of sensible Shorten. He's the best Prime Minister we never had. Shorten gets in. Oh, I tell you, if only we could resurrect Bob Hawke's corpse. Bob Hawke's corpse gets in. Oh, Bob Hawke's corpse just doesn't have the life that Bob Hawke had in the 80s, you know? Maybe we should resurrect Scullin. I will correct something I've stated in the past. The media loves the Labor Party. It's just that they love the ghost of Christmas past and the ghost of Christmas future, never the present. Anyone who becomes leader is instantly torn down while they turn the six o'clock news into a grass is always greener right after millionaire hot seat. Watch this interview on the 7.30 report with Ferret. Laura Tingle. Look at how desperate they are to undermine Albo and so discontent amongst the Labor base. There are major policy brawls within the party, for example, on climate change. But Albanese's problems with his colleagues are more fundamental. They don't think voters are listening to him and they are not sure he looks like a Prime Minister. Who? F*** the ABC's arrogant. Just a bunch of televised inner city mums whose worldview is... No, because I said so! No, don't argue! Well, let me try that. <clears throat> Everyone in the Labor Party is unified and they all love Albo. I can't tell the difference between Question Time and Care Bears. Now, let's all move on to the next point because I've just provided as much evidence as the ABC does. <laughs> In this context, Albanese is struggling to be heard. He has yet to set out a clear policy platform and has not jumped on issues that resonate with the public. Says the unbiased arbiters of truth paid for by the Liberal government. Man, I love these videos, and so do you. Pay respect by liking and subscribing to what is pretty much just a Gary Awesome video, but with length spinning spite ball animations. If he hasn't connected with voters, why are Labor doing so well in the two party preferred? Because of the favorable coverage they get from you? He literally bought about JobKeeper. I think that's a bit of a connection with the voters. Shut the f*** up. Unlike the man he replaced. COVID's been shocking. People have died, Great. people lost their jobs. There it is! Right there, 250! What did I say? Oh, if only Bill Shorten was- AGAIN! And then as soon as Shorten becomes leader- Albo's had time to reflect on the backbench, and I think he's ready for another tilt. Then when Albo's in- Oh, well, Kim Beasley's had even more time to reflect than Albo had. Then when Kim Beasley gets in, Labor's too tired. Maybe it's time for them to replace experience with verve. Uh, th this young Labor guy in UNSW, mm, that one, he should be leader. You often ask the question, what's the point of this government? What I'd like to ask you is, what's the point of the Albanese opposition? Jesus Christ, they're giving it away. This should be so obvious to everyone. You ready? Wait for the next question, it's coming. But do you really think issues like childcare, important as they are, are of themselves important enough to get people to change their vote 
in such times of uncertainty. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, I know it's strange being this enthused about moronic journalism as most people are about, yes, this bull made the wood fly. But their current narrative of he's not offering the Australian public an alternative. F I hate that point. The ABC is filled with so many pampered champagne addicts they can't tell the difference between governing and the book club. Where's the story? Not subjectively inspiring enough to me. The whole nation hates it. He puts his platform on all the platforms he can, which is just his YouTube channel because you cunts keep sitting there ignoring it and bitching. Oh, it's not as well written as expectations. Boo. Remember when Shorten was in? Remember they were hitting him on the exact opposite? And the opposition leader, Bill Shorten, joins me now from Melbourne. Thank you very much for being with us. No worries, Lee. Um, Bill Shorten, you're unapologetically <laughs> running for government on a big new agenda. So let's run through some of the detail of it, beginning with climate change. See, whatever Labor's doing, the reason they've been out of power for virtually 30 years straight is not because the entire press is against them. Oh, no, it's because they should be doing the exact opposite of what they're currently doing. And then they do the exact opposite of what they're currently doing. What are you doing? You should be doing the exact opposite of what you're currently doing. It's this insane, I think so conscious ritual the press have of saying here you go Albo, walk through this house of mirrors. Mm, I wonder why your image isn't cutting through to the public. Maybe if you let Plibersek walk through this house of mirrors we're just going to chuck this note on the back of her as she does. It's a brilliant quote by Peter Hitchens. A country where the media attack the opposition rather than the government is a country where freedom is under threat. Here we have the ABC literally saying what's the point of the opposition? F these people are awful. Truly the servants of corruption with the infuriating self-delusion of keeping them honest. But not ScoMo, just Albo. What is interesting though is you can use these exact same tricks on them. With Joel Fitzgibbon's voting record of voting for every carbon reduction initiative put before Parliament, he's known as Carl Fitzgibbon. While Dave Sharma says, oh yeah, I love renewables. Not as much as I love insider trading, but it's up there. Votes against carbon reduction initiatives all the time. Why isn't he known as Dave Smoker, eh? Or Dave Insider Trading Gets Tips. Dave Smoker is fine. Look, it rolls off the tongue as well as Cole Fitzgibbon does. The point is the guy represents Wentworth. So let's use the same ABC tricks on him. Oh, he didn't denounce Scott Morrison not denouncing Trump. Is Dave Sharma a Trumper? There's Bass, which is already on a razor's edge, and they're really starting to hate Bridget Archer because of the whole cashless welfare card fiasco, but nope. Smug f**ks on Twitter would prefer to bitch non-stop about a Labor MP trying to stop a seat falling to one nation. But they're not doing it because the press doesn't. Oh no, they came to that conclusion themselves. Because if there's one thing twitwits don't do, it's pile on. You know the Lincoln Project? No. Oh, well they exist. As does the Facebook page, yeah the boys. The point is, they're a bunch of warmongers that hate Trump. Anyway, they showed that the more popular an ad was on Twitter, the less likely it was to convince battleground voters not to vote for Trump. So my point is that if Twitter thinks Albo isn't doing a good job, he's probably doing a good job. And my broader point would be, f Twitter. And my even broader point would be that if you ever notice an uptick in leadership speculation around Labor, it's because the media knows that that Labor leader is a threat. For f**k's sake, even Josh Frydenberg knows that Albo's a threat. Josh Frydenberg doesn't know anything. So quick poll, subscribe to this channel if you, like the greatest political commentator of our time, Gary Awesome, don't believe the main scheme media. Each like you give this video is another middle finger to the ABC. And make a bunch of pro Albo huh? Do an Albo meme review. I want to see lots of, yeah, Albo can kick a ball pretty good, can it? Oh, what's this? Scott Morrison can't do it as well. Such a dick. All I'm saying is, making Albo memes really helps. As does getting two of your friends to subscribe to this channel, because come on, it's an election year. Let's beat seven. We won't, but let's try. Please share and comment below. Come in.